Yes, Darren Rain is a senior bond strategist with Invest at Wealth Investment. He's with me in the studio now. Darren, good to see you. Thanks very much for coming in. Let's start with these reports of ECB intervention in the Spanish and Italian debt markets. You say this is a good thing. Absolutely, yeah. and that's clearly being demonstrated in the markets. We've seen we've seen yields fall. Uh, they're getting what to 5.2, 5.3%. The movement in, in in the right direction. It's a movement in the right direction right now, but is it likely to last? You know, a lot of analysts saying it's a quick fix. It doesn't actually do anything to resolve the underlying problem. Absolutely right, but th there's a couple of things. So governments need to to make their country solvent. So that's the one thing, and, and that's that's been taken care of. Italy and Spain have shown clear signs that, that they want to do that. But over and beyond that, as you suggested at the very start, I think European policymakers need to come together and, and show that they're aiming for, for the for the same thing, which is to give confidence to the market. That's the one thing that's really lacking in markets at the moment. Okay, so then let me ask you about the riskiness of this move on the part of the ECB. The this isn't like buying Irish, Portuguese, Greek bonds. You're talking about intervening into the biggest markets in the Eurozone. Significant expansion of their own balance sheet. It is, a, yeah, although to be fair, they are neutralizing what they're doing on, on the other side by taking liquidity from the money markets. But you're right, some people might see this as, as a form of quantitative easing, and there are clear concerns in Germany about that. Um, but what this is really, this is a stopgap until the mm. EFSF has its wider powers, and perhaps until we get a much bigger fund um, or more funding from the EFSF. Just a quick one before we get to the EFSF. Um, sure. If some people see this as a form of QE, could inflation become even more of a problem than it is right now? Yeah, well, as I say, I mean, they are neutralizing it on, on the other side, yeah. but there are clear concerns. I mean, you've seen the German Bundesbank and, and what it's that the, it's clearly been against uh, mm. purchase of, of government bonds by the ECB. Uh, now, with the EFSF, I mean, it, we're expecting when exactly are we expecting the, the fund to actually buy bonds on the secondary market? They say a few weeks, but the problem mm -hmm. is you have this long protected process where everything has to be approved by national governments. Is that fast enough? for the markets? It's absolutely not fast enough for the markets. I mean, the time that I've seen is, is that they think it won't be available until the end of September, these wider powers. And given now what we're at the start of August, that's, that's light years away. We need to have something um, sooner than that. And if we don't? And if we don't, well, the ECB has to step in and say the ECB is providing the, the stopgap for me. Um, uh, otherwise, the downside could, could be very large. What about the US downgrade? How is that likely to impact Europe? Uh, the ratings of other top tier countries like France now mm -hmm. somewhat vulnerable. Absolutely. I mean, that's that's one of the big repercussions to come out of the US downgrade. It's going to put the spotlight on other AAA countries. The one that really comes out is France. Mm. I mean, the debt to GDP of France is actually worse than the than US. Although, again, to be fair, I think um, S&P, one of the reasons why S&P downgraded the US wasn't only on, on, its, um, ability to pay, uh, on, on its ability to pay, it's also its willingness. And there's certainly a, a big concerns there about the dysfunction in the US government. Yeah, the politics was a big part of it, wasn't it? That the fact that those debt ceiling negotiations saw months of heated negotiations and, and uh, the deal just uh, didn't seem to go far enough. Um, but has it actually impacted or do you expect it to have much of an effect on appetite for treasuries in this environment? Absolutely not. When you think we've got Eurozone sovereign debt crisis, that we've got um, the third largest bond market in the world and uh, being Italy and people are very concerned about that. If you want to go somewhere where you have a risk averse assets, you've been talking about gold, you've been talking about the Swiss franc, well US treasuries are, are, are one of the main um, assets you would go to. So no, they're going to be well bid. And, and another thing that's worth pointing out, mm. markets at the moment are awash with cash and investors have to put their cash for the short term in, in some asset and certainly US Treasury bills have been a big beneficiary of that and that's unlikely to change. I'm just, just curious, what about the appetite of foreign investors, especially China, for US Treasuries? Yeah, that's a good point and certainly there's been some sabre, sabre wrestling coming out of China but where else does China go? China, China needs to, uh, to maintain its currency peg that it has with the US so it has, has to buy uh, US assets and even if it didn't want to do that, where else can it go? Can it go to Italian bonds, Japanese, um, yen bonds? Um, no, is the answer. So in the short term, there are no obvious alternatives. Okay. And so just going back to this ECB intervention, I mean, we are seeing now borrowing costs for Spain and Italy coming down a bit, but is it going to last? Are we going to stay below 6%? 
We have to stay below 6%. I mean, the ECB needs to, to make sure this happens because what we do know is that yields of 6 or 7% are not sustainable for either Italy or Spain. For, for those yields to be sustainable, nominal growth rates in those countries would have to be at a level of 6 or 7%, which they're not and which they're unlikely to be. So the ECB must get them down to, I mean, 4 to 5% really is the bracket they want to be in. And you believe that they've, they've got that firepower, they can just keep buying. I mean, we've, we've got various quotes this morning that mm -hmm. they're going to have to buy anywhere up to 2.5 billion euros a day to really fill the time gap between now and when the, when the bailout fund is up to speed. Do, do they just keep pumping money into it. Is, is, that what they, is that what they'll do? Well, my concern is up until now, the ECB has been very much behind the curve, as have European policymakers. So that you get some rhetoric and then it all seems to go away. So I do have concerns over that. But essentially, that's what they because need to do. Because they're not united. I mean, the, Germ the yeah. Germans have already Correct. made it very clear, listen, this is, this is not what we want to do. Are we, are we at a point of where there's a potential fracture in Europe? Absolutely. We might be close to that point. You're saying, I mean, the Germans and, and, and the position of the ECB is very different. They're saying the ECB just doesn't have that appetite. So we'll have to make sure. And, of course, let's look to the, see what happened with, with Greece. Gre um, Greek buying of bonds came in. Yields fell sharply, only to rise again. So that is a lesson to us. So we need to get those powers from the ES, EFSF to us as soon as we can. And say, and the end of September is too far away. I mean, I'm just wondering, even when we get to the end of September and the ECB, the EFSF, I should say, starts buying bonds in the secondary market, mm -hmm. I mean, the key concern and part of the reason for all this volatility we're seeing yeah. is the fact that it needs to be reinforced. The, the size of the bailout fund needs to be boosted to at least a couple of trillion euros. I agree. A couple of trillion euros, that's the figure that I, I have in mind. I mean, 440 billion, not large enough when you consider the size of the Italian bond market. So it needs to be big enough that it scares markets. But are we not getting to a juncture where, res respectfully, we started talking about billions in 2007. We then moved to trillions. We're now at two trillion. Mm -hmm. I mean, the bill has got to be paid at some juncture. Is this not just an ever-decreasing circle of risk in terms of pouring good money after bad? Sure. Although it can only increase to the size of some of these markets, remember. So that's and we are we are getting to when we're talking through uh, two trillion or two yeah two trillion euros. We are talking the size of the, of the Italian bond market. And as I said earlier, it's it's the third biggest bond market in the world. But you're right. It, we, it is concerning. I mean, we, we try not to think of the downside because the downside can be quite scary. Well, should yeah. this not work? Well, exactly. Because I mean, you make a good point, don't you, Manus? That it, it just you know where where does it stop? Where do you draw the line? And and it has to keep on growing because of contagion spreading to these larger economies. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just wondering then, uh, that's not the sustainable situation, is it? I mean, what happens no. after you put a couple of tri trillion in there? Sure. But I mean, remember, this EFSF has, has other powers. It has the yeah. power to provide short-term finance to governments that are, that are in trouble at reasonable rates. So it could be for a period of six months. Instead of Italy and Spain coming to the market, it, it provides funding. And it gives, it gives markets the time to calm down. Well, one last thing, as a backstop to everybody out there, is it still Treasuries? I mean, I heard you say that, yeah. yes, they, they'll remain well bid, in other words, well supported. Is that the bottom line? If in doubt, nowhere else to go, buy Treasuries. Absolutely. Two Did years, five years, 30 years? Where do you, where do you play on the curve? Well, it, um, t 10 years would be our, our obvious place um, for where, where wealth management. Um, but ha having said that, you have to say that from, from a technical point of view, they do look very expensive. They are at the price they are, and it's all to do with safe havens. There you go. Markets seem to have shrugged off that downgrade, at least for now. Anyway, thanks very much indeed.